this is the president. Hello, this is the president of the United States. Who is this? Is it you again? Look behind you. This is my private line. How did you get through? They're everywhere. All the time. We see them every day. But you have to look behind you. There is nothing behind me. How did you get this number? The spaceman told me. What spaceman? It doesn't matter. They're telling you about monsters. Please, you must look behind you. Young lady, there are no monsters in the Oval Office. Six seven three thirty seven hundred. That's triple eight six seven three thirty seven hundred. By all means, go to talkstreamlive.com. Talkstreamlive.com provides you with several links to go to streaming the program. Radio stations across the country stream this program in its entirety. I'm Clyde Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. Numbers to call tonight, 888-673-3700. That's 888-673-3700. As you may already see and hear on this program, that there are many clues to consider when we're dealing with something that is considered a major sign in the heavens, an eclipse of the sun, which will be happening August 21st, 2017. Now... Earlier, I kind of touched a little bit on the dragon metaphor, the the serpent, the dragon. And this has always been one of those reoccurring themes when you're talking about, you know, how how God operates or how the creator operates. Because the snake has many representations, knowledge, uh, healing, uh, you know, and, and this is why we go back to uh, when I when I talked earlier about how the sun stood still. Uh, this is from the book of Joshua. The sun stood still, the moon stayed until the people had avenged themselves of their enemies as if a war had broke out. And, you know, this is, uh, it says, isn't this not written in the book of Joshua? Well, Joshua talks about the relationship that the people of earth had with beings out there. And uh, a lot of people, well, Somebody wrote me and they said the eclipse affects the country that it appears over. So here we are in the United States and this thing is going to cross the United States and end up in the 33rd parallel, as we said. And 33 days after the eclipse is the Virgo, Jupiter, Leo alignment. We talked about the Sphinx, Leo and Virgo, the face of a woman, the body of a lion. Now, Columbia is also, of course, the end of the line for the sun. Columbia is also represented by the the lady of the moon, the goddess Diana, the the uh, Isis Mary, um, the same as the Statue of Liberty. Uh, the Statue of Liberty, of course, represents the goddess, represents this country. So it's been noted that when you're thinking about the United States, we are, at the moment, we are going to be the host to this eclipse, and we are the wealthiest, most powerful, most influential nation. 
Let's go to Gabriel in California. Hi, Gabriel. You're on Ground Zero. Hi, Clyde. Hey. Great topic. Thank you. So um, just to explain a little bit of the um, the Rosicrucian um, teachings as far as the astrology and stuff and what's going on, uh, for, for starters, um, the sun is actually where, where the archangels would be. Right. So we have, we have the angels on the moon, the, the Lucifer and, and those angels that broke away from Jehovah would be on Mars, but the archangels would be on the sun. Mm-hmm. So, and Christ is actually, uh, the highest initiate of the archangels. So the Christ spirit goes into Jesus, the man, but, but that's a whole nother, a whole nother story. Um, so what happens is w- during the total, um, solar eclipse, now the sun, the sun, and we, everyone knows that the sun and the stars and everything influence everything that happens here on earth, mm-hmm. with people, with events, with everything. Mm-hmm. So with, with the total solar eclipse, the, now the sun represents the spirit and stuff and the mind in people. So that, that veil is actually going to be thickened because of the eclipse. However, the moon represents the soul of man and of, or of people man male and female and so the 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 veil um for the soul and the soul body will be thinned It'll, the veil will be thinner and it's going to have a just like you've been saying it's going to have a direct effect on uh, the united states and i can explain that a little bit um the the united states was based off of originally based off of an archetype and just for example um what an ex- uh, aspect of the archetype that it was based off was was um, we the people are the government for the people. So the people, the citizens, are actually supposed to be the government. But unfortunately, today we all know that that's changed a lot, and people are more like cattle and have very little say and and stuff and you know freedoms and jeopardy and stuff like that. So what's going to happen is during this eclipse is actually going to be a very good thing for America, and it goes just like you said, it goes right across America and it, and it affects America. Um, what's going to happen is we're, it's going to push us closer to the original archetype that, Ameri- that the United States was meant to be. And a lot of stuff, especially regarding corruption in, in politics, is going to be brought to light. So um, that could mean with Trump, that could mean like him and his group draining the swamp. Or uh, on the flip side of the coin, that could mean uh, some people think that he's corrupt or his group is corrupt. That could mean things coming to light that are uh, incriminating towards him. Mm-hmm. So I personally think it would be the, the former and not the latter. Uh, I think because he's not really even a politician and he's talking about draining the swamp. So I think he, I'm kind of inclined to think that he'd be more like what we need, but uh, we will find out. What do you, what do you say about that? And I want to get through this. Uh, you know, it's interesting that we recently had a leader in France declare himself that he wanted to rule like Jupiter or Zeus and that uh, this certainly uh, raises flags about the Antichrist. We see that, uh, you know, the royals, uh, they're getting older. And as I was talking, I don't know if you caught my uh, my uh, talk about the, the Trump card or the, uh, the 13, 13th card, the tarot and the Rose Cruz, the, uh, the rose that is on the writer that is representation of healing and change. Uh, the dead, the dead rider in the, in the, in the tarot deck. If you look at the tarot card, it's interesting that it shows as the rider rides in, a new sun rises over the new Jerusalem. And there is a bishop or a pope, uh, awaiting the arrival of this rider. But at the foot of the rider is a dead prince or a dead, uh, it's either dead prince, dead princess. They say it's some sort of royal, uh, like kings will fall, governments will fall. Uh, the church will rise and the sun will shine on the new Jerusalem. And I, and I find it interesting that, you know, I was talking about the, what they call the, the, the cross in alchemy, the Rose Cruz, the, the celestial light cross and how it all comes together. Uh, there's, there's four points to it. And we talk about the four constellations, which represent, they could represent the four horse of the apocalypse. And out of that comes the sun, which will be darkened. And, uh, of course, uh, if you look at what the cross in alchemy, uh, and you know this because, you know, you're Rosicrucian, that uh, you see LVX or you see LUX on the uh, on the uh, card, and that is the light. And they say it's the menses of the serpent of heaven, where 
if the Ouroboros forms, which of course is the representation of eclipse, it will bleed gold or it'll bleed sunlight uh, from from its body. And I just thought that, that that's kind of interesting and, and prophetic when you take a look at the tarot decks and you look at what, it, what uh, the rose means. And of course, you know, we are uh, the rose state or Portland is the rose city, but uh, Oregon, uh, it, it begins in Salem which is like Jerusalem. The sun comes up, it darkens in Salem, and then it makes its journey across the United States with several other places like Madras and, and, and John Day, like the Apostle John and Madras, meaning Mother of God, which brings us back to the idea of this, this, this uh, event that's going to be happening on September 23rd. Yeah, absolutely. You bring up a lot of good stuff. And I, I like Ryan Gable a lot. He was your guest, I think, last week. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I totally agree with, with Ryan Gable, uh, right on the same page as him. And a lot of the Illuminati stuff is misunderstood or twisted around and, and mistranslated. Yeah. But um, it's, we're all, everything's moving towards uh, un unity. So if that means one world government, then that's what it means. If that means everybody being one religion, that's what it means. But unity is not a bad thing. And what they say is that eventually all the different races will be, or not races, I'm sorry, uh, religions will be replaced by uh, the Rosicrucian religion. Well, forced religious belief or forcing religious belief on someone is not good. You see, and that's the thing, that's the thing I worry about with this one world government and the so-called unity factor is we're looking at unity, but really unity? Or is it we take your choice away and force you into a position of being in a collective that uh, is a, a one world order that is a uh, that is a new and improved socialist order that isn't quite state socialism, but it has the liberty and justice for those who deserve it, not those who uh, have inalienable rights to it. And see, these are the things I worry about because, you know, nobody wants Sharia law and nobody wants a, a religion. And, and even if it's Christianity, no one a, wants a Christian religion or even a form of a Christian religion forming into an empire and, and creating a, a uh, hegemon that's going to move in from country to country and annex it. I, I just don't see that as being something that we want. Right. And that's why, uh, like the Rosicrucian movement, for example, isn't based on might or force or the sword or the gun. Uh, it's based on enlightenment and love and joining the, the mind with the heart and, and, and getting there through enlightenment. So what would happen is it would, as people become enlightened and stuff. Right. Uh, they, they would just gravitate towards that type of universal um, brotherhood and, and sisterhood. And well, all I know is, is that everything seems a bit quirky and weird, and it is awkward at times to talk about the idea that we have the eclipse, and then seven years later we have another one where we're seeing ourselves in a seven-year period that most people have told me that there will be this seven-year period, whether it be a seven-year period of peace or what have you. I know that... You know, it's all twisted and miscombobulated in a lot of respects. But if anyone can give clarity on any of this information and how these synchronicities are all adding up, tell me what you think. Tell me what you're feeling right now, because I think it's an amazing time to be alive as we watch this all unfold. And it begins right here in Oregon. How's that? Salem, as a matter of fact. 888-673-3700. It's 888-673-3700. We'll be back with more Ground Zero. Don't go away. FM News 101 KXL. This is Ground Zero. I'm Clyde Lewis, and this is Ground Zero. You know, there are many people who have the idea that they want to see it to believe it. And you don't always have to see something in order to know that it's there, in order to know that there is something deep within all of us that reacts to anomalies in the sky. I mean, he reacted to a UFO and he shot at it. So he said he believed it because he saw it. Well, I mean, what we're about to see on August 21st is going to be something that many of us have not seen in our lives. I have not. I mean, I remember there was an eclipse that started in Oregon many years ago. And I remember the coverage on TV. But to be there. Not to see it on television and not to use a, a box to look in on it from the... I mean, I remember uh, when the eclipse happened, we were told that we wouldn't see the whole eclipse when I lived in Utah, but we'd see a partial. And so what I did is I took a little pin and I poked it in a Quaker Oats, uh, Quaker Oats lid, and then I was able to view... You can also do it if you put a hole... If you take a pin and you poke a hole in some paper and then you take another piece of paper and you stand with the sun behind you, you can actually see a reflection through the hole... 
onto a piece of paper and you can see the eclipse that way. But, you know, I would go from this angle. And this is the way I I did not express well, I don't think, the way I wanted to go here. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try and do this again and, and do it better in the last hour of this program. I know that many times that it's been theory, uh, theorized that all things in the public narrative, everything we hear and we take part in, is shaped... A lot of what we hear and a lot of what we believe and a lot of what we think is shaped by religionists. In some cases, it is shaped by occultists. Uh, there are people who are directed morally by religious thought, and there are people who are directed morally by learning the esoteric knowledge of occultists. This is why we get a phone call from a Rosicrucian, because you know he has esoteric knowledge, and he gets it, you know... He has knowledge of the occult, and, uh, you know, I have a knowledge of the occult, but I don't push occultist views on people. I like to know a little something about what I'm talking about when I'm confronted with it. So you can argue that politics shape most of our views, but politics, like everything else in this world, is shaped on how we view God or how we view ourselves and what we are in the midst of all this. I mean, many times I've been told that, well, my politics basically reflect how I feel about God. My politics reflect personally how I feel about family and and, you know, there are a number of reasons why people are conservative and a number of reasons why people are liberal. I mean, a lot of, a lot of it has to do with the order of all things in the universe, including, uh, you know, how planets affect us, how stars affect us, how the sun affects us. Now, atheists will claim that they are unaffected by God or even superstitious astrology. And to their own folly, it needs to be said that in the grand order of things, all the pieces fall into play. As the majority dictates. So, look, if you're an atheist, yeah, okay, good. You know, you've, you've decided that you don't want to believe in God. Well, there's a majority of people out there that do believe. And so it's their thoughts and their movements and, and how they move. I mean, God moves in mysterious ways, but not as mysterious as his followers. And that's what makes this so fascinating. Is that how are the followers of God? How are the followers of, of, of astrology? Those who follow the stars and the, and the planets. I mean, how is that going to go? Because that's the majority of people. I mean, when majorities are governed by leaders who have the faith in various religious backgrounds and other magical things, I mean, the cultural, the, the culture that we have reflects the movements of its leadership. And think about Donald Trump for a moment. I mean, the, the culture we have right now is a reflection of our leadership. On one hand, his rhetoric and what appears to be his angry uh, his angry demeanor is affecting those who are on the left side and uh, others see him as a warrior and someone who's steadfast and wants to make America great again so you know this has been the case for thousands of years the way the planet is affected by religious beliefs how the planet is 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 affected by occult beliefs or uh, esoteric uh Paranormal belief. I mean, the paranormal, the esoteric, uh, religious, I mean, occult, I mean, it all is what affects us. And the sun, at the moment, is of great interest now. I mean, the way the planet reacts, the people and the planet itself is a reflection of thoughts we harbor in our collective unconscious. And we are, we are resident beings. We are transceivers. We receive and we transmit. And we also respond to the electric world around us. The, the geomagnetic field is an essential element in the physical makeup of the planet Earth. And it's, it's uh, the same for human beings. I mean, I mean, in recent weeks, we're noticing, that, I mean, everything's becoming evident, that there are preparations being made in the way that we view our way of life here on Earth. There, a lot of things are changing. We're changing our attitudes. And no matter how ridiculous... You may find the scenarios that we're talking about. That Some of you may think it's totally ridiculous. So, I mean, you may have to understand that many people have these ideas or they have core beliefs and, and they are what guide the world. I mean, all the belief systems of the world is guiding this world. I mean, everybody's fighting for the steering wheel of this huge spaceship we're on called Planet Earth. We have a UN, we have a United States president, we have leadership in Europe, we have the EU, we have, you know, Russia. I mean, they're all fighting for that wheel. 
And it's how mankind copes with this world and all of the things that happen in space. Uh, either we cope with it and we handle it or it affects us to the point where things go out of control. 